So the Panasonic Pony of Hope has taken the G9 from me, you piece of shit. I had to return it, but not before one last time with a macro lens. Olympus 60mm macro, 2.8. I wanted to see what we could get like majestically close with super crops in 300 frames per second. The cinema was ours. That's all we know. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. All right, let's get into some footage. We're on the Sony a7S III Zeiss 35mm Tony 2.8. Microphone hidden to my right, not even viewable by mankind. It's the Sennheiser MKH 416 knockoff from China. A dollar store in China sent it to me. I'm so grateful. Glimmer glass, engaged. Oh, you saw blooms, huh? I just put it on. You care. Okay, now I didn't label a lot of this footage, so I went between 4K 120p HD 300 frames, and then HD 120 with a pixel-to-pixel -pixel crop, which ended up, like, supersizing the macro ability. So, like, that lens is a 1-to-1 -one -one macro, but when you do the super crop, it's, like, a almost 4-to-1. So, like, I got some intense moments. It's hard because Panasonic will just say, here's your 1080p 24p file, and I have no idea if it was 300 frames or super cropped. So whatever. Here was HD 300 frames per second. I just wanted to see how close I could get. This was as close as you can get. And then if you punch in to pixel to pixel life in HD 120, majestic things. It's not easy to keep it stable at that frickin' closeness, but hot damn. And I did have a lot of focusing struggles. I won't show them to you. Just this one majestic, beautiful red flying dragon that I was like, oh, come on now. So here's some 4K 120p, we got a fly. I got much closer to him, but like we're just testing the waters here. Can I get him in focus? He left my life. Then I got closer. They shine, they shine green. He's looking for like seaweed or something. I don't know, usually they only eat dog poo. I don't know what he's doing. This one just finished a nice meal of dog poo and he's rubbing his hands. He's like, what, you judging me? What, you, you know what I was in my last life? Like a freaking kangaroo, so leave me alone. Look at this yoga, you see that? That's my kangaroo legs, I remember them. I'm out of here, you're a loser. This fly was red. I was like, hey, you never would have noticed it in real life, but look, he sticks his tongue in the flowers and he's red. Ah, oh, oh boy. That's cute, they got little spiky hairs. Imagine if you touched one, it feels like it would make you bleed. No thank you. No thank you to you, Mr. Fly. And then a majestic bee in the golden hour light of bee time? Can you believe it? The goldenness. Oh, those penny boy colors, I tell ya. Doesn't matter if anything's in focus. It's Panasonic. All I know is at 2.8, nothing was in focus, so I stopped down at some point to like Tony 8, and I'm just... You can't like focus, you have to focus by leaning in and out. And I was getting a hang of it, but for some reason it was so hard to find the thing. Like a bee right in front of me, and I'm like, okay, and I can't see it. I'm like, how am I not pointed at it? Why am I so bad at this? I can do it on the Sony 600 mil, no problem. It's like, oh, yep, there you are, Bo. But macro right in front of me. I suck. This is likely 300 frames per second as a bee crawls towards us and he sucks nectar that God provided for him and then he makes honey that you find in baked goods. I got some crazy shots. We're just working up to it. This is nothing. You can almost see his eyes. Some of him was in focus at some point. He flew. His legs shook around. The dreamy, like, blur and separation and just beauty. I think Micro Four Thirds might have the edge, because in full frame, it's like, you gotta stop down even more, the depth of field is too shallow, and you can't beat the Penny Boy color science for nature, I tell ya, and the richness of the image. I don't know what it is, but it's just beauty upon us at all times. I mean, we're talking purple and yellow together at last. Yellow bee, purple flowers, green background. I mean, you're in a carnival, of taste and pleasure your eyes are just like feasting on dessert and bees have sharp sword-like tongues that they suck nutrients out of flowers with 
you can see sometimes like the syrup going through its translucent sword tongue. That's a sharp dagger tongue. You are something special, my friend. Now here's where I'm pretty sure we jumped into the pixel to pixel crop. And it's just like monster season here. Like when he's in focus, the details are just insanity. And just like the obliterated background and the colors. G92 for macro and wildlife, uh, you're a contender. The only thing I didn't appreciate was like the viewfinder. It was kind of hard to tell what was in focus and what wasn't. So like, I would love to see a GH6 or 7 with a nice sharp viewfinder and you're doing this kind of stuff and even more specs than the G92. But like, hot damn, hot damn. I imagine that Olympus lens is super sharp. It has amazing reviews. I've borrowed it off my friend, but imagine if we had a Leica macro lens. Dare you even dream that? You shouldn't. Don't, you'll have nightmares. Oh no, my shot's boring. This bee was upside down and then he turned over. He's all covered in pollen. Uh, you're all dusty. Oh, that's so cute. You're dusty. Just looking at all the little details of the wing how it's like a stained glass window and then like parts of the shot that I definitely wanted in focus like his bum and his back legs and the pollen thing and we got some eyes and they get pollen in their eyes they don't even care like right on their eyeball imagine how that would feel for us not good you can see they even wipe off their eyes not that I got it in focus but they it is annoying to them like it would be to us so like, they're just like us, me and you and the bees, we're together. I got like 15 hours of bee footage, so we should probably move on to something else. But the point has been made that macro plus slow-mo plus Panasonic color science and stabilization is a nice little treat for all of us, isn't it? of that pixel to pixel mode in HD 120p when things are in focus for a split second it's pretty magic it's so detailed it's insane it's just so hard to use <laughs> even though like the bees are right in front of you they're not moving too much it was literally impossible to get anything in focus for long so it's just like tiny bits are in focus at certain times and it's good enough look at that wing look at that buzzing wing that is fantastic. And that was all in HD, like 300 or 120. If you go to 4K 120, it's like insanely sharp, like even sharper, like too sharp. You see so much that you regret it. You literally regret what you saw. You learn things you wish you didn't know, like bees having two legs on their face. Why would you need those? But they do, apparently they do. And it works for them, they sense the surrounding area. I wish I could do that with my hair. The native Indians of the past had long hair and like you would never cut your hair because that's how you sense an attack coming. Oh, no, stop it. And this is all handheld by the way. Like name me a system that you can do that with. I remember taking the Sony 90mm 2.8 macro out and I'm trying, but it's just so shaky and it's hard to get, like the closer you get to something, the shakier it is. So like most people do like tripod work and it's photos and oh, that's so boring. But we got like super slow motion video with super crops. And it's like, it's so fun to see the movement. Why take a picture when you can capture a moment in time that extends past the one thing, one frame. 300 frames per second. The only annoying thing about Penny Boy when you're in these 120 frames per second is it's 3200 ISO max. So it's like a lot of things get dark pretty quick. So I could see Sony having an advantage, like you stop down to Tony 8 and then you're ISO 12,800 and 
yeah, you have some stuff, but then it would be more shaky, and you couldn't go to 300 frames per second. Come on. But I saw, like, hundreds of wasps eating this apple. They all fit inside. It was a bee storm of horror and nightmares. And they had fun together. It's like an apple orgy. It's just so surreal and gross. The tiny little world of insects and what the hell is down there. You could really get lost in a whole universe of horrors and nightmares. This wasp was carrying something that didn't even look like a piece of the apple. He was carrying it up to his father or something, then he dropped it. The lazy ass. But all in all, it was a damn pleasure to use that panty boy. Well done. I'm waiting for the GH7 now. We'll see what that does. I'm going to make a video on what I hope it should do. And not bad, panty boy. You, you redeemed yourself. For the longest time, you couldn't focus on nothing. Now you're not bad. You're, you're pretty good. You actually lead the industry in a lot of ways. Well, not quite Sony level, but like better than Canon and Nikon, I think. I'm just throwing it out there. If you want to catch it, you want to put it in your pocket for later, you keep that. On a side note, just a useful tip for you. I was watching some cinematic lighting video, and he recommended this app called Color Temperature Kelvin Meter. And this thing just measures everything in your life. And you son of a bitch, Zeiss. It's your one fly. You don't focus on anything closer than an inch. But whatever. So you point it. You see what's happening? Point it at a white thing, and then it tells you what temperature it is. And then you can set your light to that. Although I can't. It's a daylight light that can't be adjusted. But then you set the white balance to that number. And that's what I did. It's too warm. It looks warm, but the colors told me it was... I'll leave. How you doing? Sennheiser. Subscribe for more videos.